Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to another Alpha 24 preview video. So we've had a few videos that have looked at the changes that could be implemented. So why don't we now have a look at the changes that will be implemented. This includes game mechanics, units and buildings. So there's no time to waste. Let's get into it. So to begin with, I'm just going to clarify that this video is about the changes to the way the game works that are going to affect all factions, or at least almost all factions. Now this means that there will be another video that's an addendum to the recently completed faction overview series, and that will detail big changes to individual factions. Fortunately, there aren't a phenomenal number of these, so I should be able to cover all the factions in one 10 to 15 minute video, or at least I hope I can. And so with housekeeping out of the way, let's have a look at our first ranch of changes. Major village phase changes. So with farms, they're going to introduce a sliding scale of farming efficiency. Whereas previously up to five farmers could gather at the same rate on a single farm, you can now still have up to five farmers, but each new farmer gathers at a slightly reduced rate to the previous one. So this means that for optimal efficiency, you're looking at needing one farmer per field, and that means you need a lot more farms. So this is going to have huge implications for how fields are arranged with regards to both proximity to a drop site as well as making sure your farmers are still able to get protection from raiders. It's a really interesting change that's going to have big implications for your game. So say goodbye to the classic eight farms around the Civic Center formation and hello to a brave new farming world. Now Loom as an upgrade is actually rarely used, but it's super useful and it can save your women from lancers in particular who otherwise just cut them down in no time. The change is that you'll now see your hit points doubled rather than increased by 50%, but to counteract this, the cost goes up from 150 food to 200. So this will make it even more useful against factions that rush, as it gives you more time to get your women to safety, especially if you're facing, as we've already established, lancers or slingers. So time will tell whether this makes it a go-to upgrade or whether it will continue to be an afterthought. I'm torn. major town phase changes. The big one for the town phase is that the build time of stone walls is going to be reduced by around 20%, but the cost of those walls will now vary. Weirdly, smaller walls are going to be cheaper, while longer walls are going to be more expensive. I'm not quite sure how that works in practice, but I guess we'll find out when we start playing. The other big change though, is that gates will no longer be costing stone, rather they'll cost wood, and that makes more sense. And on top of this, their build time will increase while their hit points will decrease. So this means you're more likely to see people attacking your gate than your wall when you hit Alpha 24, and that's far more realistic. So it's a pretty good change in my opinion. Major city phase changes. In case it's something that interests you, and I'll be pretty honest, it doesn't particularly interest me, so let's just get it out of the way. We're looking at a cost change to wonders. So what we're going to find is that basically food is removed from the cost of building a wonder while the stone cost will increase by 50%. So in the majority of games you wouldn't be using a wonder, so it's not a huge impact for multiplayer fans, but except if you're playing with wonder victory conditions I suppose, so then it's something that you'll need to consider. This is probably the second biggest change that's going to be made in Alpha 24. And it is that whereas previously only the Macedonians had the siege workshop, this is now a building that's going to be used by all factions. The cost to build are implied to match the current Macedonian one, but the build time will actually be reduced to 180 seconds. This also means that the fortress will no longer be producing siege weapons. So the impact of this is that we should begin to see more siege weapons being produced in games, and rams are going to become even more deadly, as they can now be produced from more locations very cheaply. So, unless the long talked about change of making some kind of RAM available for all factions is implemented, this could make the Britons and the Gauls even more OP than they are now, as you can see cheap siege workshops springing up all over the place, making it far more difficult to defend against sneaky, round the side RAM attacks. And now we arrive at probably the most hotly anticipated new structure in Alpha 24. Well, especially if we use Alistair's excitement as some kind of barometer. Whoa! Yes! 
Yes! What this means is that some of the factions will be able to basically add siege weapons to their defence towers. If a faction has access to a particular siege weapon, they can now mount it in a tower. This means there are going to be towers containing catapults and bolt shooters. Now I'm not sure how useful this will be, as it effectively gives you a static siege weapon. However, it's clear that these are mostly going to be defensive. And on that basis, I can certainly see that a few catapult towers combined with stone walls could make it very difficult to take down a CC. If you can get the right configuration of walls, buildings and artillery towers in the centre of the map, then you could prove to be very difficult to displace. Very difficult indeed. So, it's one to think about, and I'm sure that it will become more clear just how useful these are once we see the likes of Borg, Feldfeld and Valorant showing us how to utilise them to their best effect. So, that's all the big changes at each phase of the game, so why don't we have a look at the gather rates, which may lead to you changing how you go about collecting resources. So, what are they? Well, the difference between soldiers and female citizens for wood and food has been increased, while the gap in gather rates for mining has been reduced slightly by increasing the speed for women. Now, none of these changes are going to have huge implications on their own, although the increased difference in food gathering does make it even more important that you don't farm with soldiers. But in all, it's not hugely different, but combined with the new farming rules, it's worth considering. So this one covers quite a lot, so we're just going to focus on the main takeaways. If you want to look the details up yourself, then I'm going to add a link in the description. So, on to the main things. So infantry, spearmen, pikemen and archers are going to see their movement speed increase slightly, while swordsmen and skirmishers see theirs drop, and in the case of skirmishers, they drop a lot. Now this will have implications on how you approach scouting and resource gathering in the early game, so you may want to revise your early game army composition. All types of cavalry will see their movement speed increased, and sword cavalry will cost 10 less metal, which is compensated by an increase of 10 wood. The other big one is that lancers are going to see their hack and pierce attack reduced significantly, but conversely they're going to see their attack repetition almost doubled, so that's a pretty fair exchange. Finally, looking at siege engines, they're all going to have their running speed removed, so they'll always go at the same speed, and rams are nerfed by reducing their speed by around 11% and removing their ability to attack units or fields. This means they'll be a little more vulnerable, but overall it's nothing too crazy. There are also changes to the hero and champion templates, but these are more focused around individual factions, so I think they're best covered in the next instalment. Still, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I look forward to bringing you more information, tips and tutorials in the very near future. So like, subscribe, and all that sort of jazz to make sure you don't miss out on any upcoming videos, and I'll see you then. Obrigado e adeus.